Does the company own the DAO? Yeah. Well, what the company owns okay, the DAO. So it does yeah, so yeah, actually, we've got three people out of 16 who have yeah. a wrapper. Um, I, I just came in. Did you guys define, could you redefine what a wrapper means in the context of this discussion? We didn't actually. That's, that's, that's the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did. Legal okay, okay. wrapper, in, our, in what we mean with legal wrapper, is pretty wide. It is a company, a corporation, an LLC, a mutual, a cooperative, anything that allows you to have legal personality within the legacy legal system. So, do you have a legal wrapper? Your your DAO, does it have a legal wrapper? I, I don't have a DAO. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question. My DAO has a legal wrapper. Door? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what is the legal rep for saying? It says that the company itself is a smart contract with. Oh, okay. I'm familiar with that. Yes. Okay. Can your DAO buy real assets and hold title to real assets? So when you say DAO, are you referring, because people use the term ambiguously. Like yes. Many people use it to refer to the deployed smart contract, yes. um, which I disagree with. Uh, because the, it's a smart contract, it's not really what the DAO is. It's some sort of, you know, it could be an, a tacit agreement, an unwritten agreement, but it's some sort of pairing of an agreement with a smart contract. So, so it's an organization. Yeah, it's an or, exactly. It's an organization. Exactly. Right. So the the code is augmenting the organization, but it's not the same thing. Is that how you're using the term? Or? So actually, we've we've had these very long discussions on what is the definition of a DAO? Is it more than a smart contract? Is it right. smart contracts? In, in this case, um, I think we're talking more about this kind of larger, you know, there's also this problem of the DAO only exists as a series of smart contracts, but the idea of the DAO, the project, the participants, you know, obviously encompass more layers of right. participants. Right, but the organization is that broader. It, exactly, so we're talking more about the broader thing. Okay. Right. So then, yeah, it can buy, right? Well, it, it but, sort of depends but, but whether... But a person must do that. It's right, a person, yeah, a person. This particular set of stuff. Smart right, exactly. But well, a person can, or a legal person can, right? Yes. If you just, depending on the nature of the social arrangement, there may be a legal person, it may be a partnership, it could be an actual formal entity. Um, but it should, if if it exists as a legal person, it can buy, or sort of the group can buy, and it can become like, you know, tenancy in common and held property. Right. So in this case, where we have two out of let's say sixteen in this room who have some sort of legal wrapper. That legal that that persona, that legal personality, would be the one that would buy the real assets. But in all of the other cases, it would be well, not, not so sure. Because you weren't part of the ones who said that would be the legal wrapper around the time, right? You weren't one of those. No, no. So, but maybe, but even sometimes just a group of people getting together, if they don't specifically disclaim otherwise, are deemed to be a legal entity. An associated corporation. Yeah. So even if there's not a written one, or a partnership. 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 Yeah. There still could be right. a legal person in that could buy But the partnership itself wouldn't usually be um, the legal person. Yes. No. Right. So, so yeah. you wouldn't. You so the DAO, it's on the DAO. It's, 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 it's one of the partners in this. I, I, I disagree. Yeah. Yeah. De facto general partnership. partnership. Yeah, and I think that is the DAO. You know, if, if people have formed, if the consequence of this group of people getting together and using the smart contract on the legal layer is that it's a partnership then yes, that partnership could go out and buy property. And in fact, it may be doing so all the time. In so some people don't realize it. Yeah, people don't realize that that's what's going on in the legal era. But, but partnership is just about the worst legal structure you can use because you have unlimited liability exactly. and inchoate and uncrystallized and you don't recommend it because... Right, but it doesn't depend. I think the key point is just because you have a legal wrapper, you don't have a legal wrapper, doesn't mean you don't have a legal identity. You might. You might you might actually want liability. I mean, you would be much more credible if your your on the line. I agree. I agree. Then you, you, you might just yeah. You might want to do share responsibility. Absolutely. I'm a corporate partner. Most of the time, they don't have legal personalities themselves in the majority of the business. Most of the time, they have legal personalities. You actually the contracting is done on the the level above the persons who are the partners, not the partnership itself. But again, if someone is in a partnership, they can go out, they can buy property on behalf of the partnership. Yes, the the partnership is buying the property. Um, so it's, it's, it, you're right, at a more mechanical level, the way that's rationalized, 
is slightly different because what they're actually doing is they're going out and they're binding individually each partner and that creates a collective effect. But it still is best conceptualized as like the legal personhood of the partnership, you know, acquiring some partners. But then that creates a trust uh, that goes to litigation. I've actually done sure, complex right. partnership litigations before and this is the last thing you actually want to do. But, yeah. And so isn't the default legal entity um, also a legal wrapper in itself? It depends. It depends on which jurisdiction you are. It depends on That's kind of what I'm saying. In the majority of jurisdictions, uh, the, the, the default general partnership will not have on its own legal personality. It's actually okay. the partners who have the legal personality because usually there will be persons or other companies and they are the legal persons. So in that respect, you wouldn't. So okay, so this, is and this is something you only problem. discovered at, you know, in ex post enforcement, you know, and that sort of thing. So in the eyes of, in the, in the visibility of, of, of the the legacy legal world, the person who's holding title might be individual, which is in this um, form of partnership. And it's only later, you know, when you're looking at what rights and duties arise from this particular group of individuals and their actions, do you then do, does a court or, you know, uh, does, is it deemed actually a partnership? That's usually in common law jurisdictions, mm -hmm. which is English, American law jurisdictions. Well, civil law jurisdictions, France, Germany, China, Japan, situation is probably different. Any civil law? It's very similar. Is it very similar? Yeah. Okay. Actually, but you know that the difference between civil and common law, in my opinion, is very much of the status. So I'm, I'm qualified actually in the US and in Germany. Okay. So there is very similar. So but the adversarial and inquisitorial systems, as well as the certainty for finding previous judgments, it's, it's different. But it's in very practice, different. But in practice, the difference is very small. That's my, but, but it's a different. It, it, it's in practice much for businesses, in practice, practice for, for businesses. In practice for businesses. Business. But I it doesn't escape sometimes you have the free action. But, but you know, let's right, just not talk about this yeah. right now. So it, it let's, let's, let's focus on uh, the topic at hand. You know, we wanted to just ask these questions to kind of get uh, ourselves to uh, prepare what the legal issues are we have to look at in this workshop. So I think we should just go to the next question. Can you can your DAO hold crypto assets? Yes. And hold title to those. Yes. Who agrees with this? That's just a variation of the previous question, right? Of course, it can hold crypto assets, but whether it can hold title is just the same as question three. The answer is the same. I think the issue with title comes down to private key ownership and who has access to the private key. Oh, you know, possession is nine tenths the law, but. But what if I get to control? Control is actually an operation, right? But, ta but, but ownership is a legal status, exactly. right? That's the difference yeah. between controlling something and actually. If, if, is something if the jurisdiction that the legal wrapper is in doesn't recognize crypto assets as assets, but the, they can still technically hold them, is uh, that a. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the question is, does the legal, uh, the crypto asset question involve legal title or not? Yes. Is it a legal yes. title question? Yeah. Or is it's it just, just an asset think control about, question? It's just to get us to think about like, the difficulties with this question. I mean, the reason why it's phrased like that is because, yeah, the difference in title and like, what is the possibility of legal is the difference between control and actually have a title to those assets. And to answer the gentleman's question, if your jurisdiction does not recognize crypto assets, then you're not holding any assets, right? That's true. So, no. Okay. Um, legally, no. Yeah, but, but, legally, but crypto, no, yes. But in practice, <laughs> crypto, yes. In practice, <laughs> you, 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 you do not. Um, does your DAO fall under any? I mean, is your DAO falling in or attracted, uh, uh, attached to any geographical jurisdiction other than the ones? I mean, we had the legal wrapper, there are two people who have a DAO with legal wrapper. Does anyone else think that their DAO that is not incorporated or has no legal wrapper is attached to any geographical jurisdiction? And if so, how could they be attached to it? Is it attached to every uh, considered member's individual jurisdiction? So, so some total? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
your DAO should set a jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, that's the conclusion. Because, I mean, you know, like, this comes back to the question you mentioned earlier. Um, sometimes people in the space think that if they're not attached to anything, they are not falling under any laws, but in fact, they're falling under any law. Exactly. It's just the other way around. So, uh, it's usually. But there's specifically space law, right? Space law is like its own thing. There's also international space law. Yeah. Well, but you know, yes, but we're not talking about space law here. So. Space law, it would be first. The question: Does this fall under space law or not? And then you have another completely different discussion on space law. Yeah. If you just look at like jurisdictions from a national space nation, yes. like what? Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like get out of that conversation box. But you know, the whole discussion of like getting a framework going on space law is much. You're not there. I think what he's saying. is is actually falling under every jurisdiction that just means that there's no risk movies. There's just everything belongs to all people already. When you create a DAO, it's already under all global jurisdictions. So this is how it happens in international waters. This is what happens on Antarctica. This is what happens in space. Also, the analogy actually makes sense. But, the fact, but in practice, you know, all these jurisdictions that have something to say would say, well, no. This, this doesn't fall, there's nothing to do with space law, we're talking no, sure, about yes, yeah. state jurisdiction. So in a way, I mean, we're trying to just be more practical at that level, you know, just to raise the concerns that exist right now. I think I'm, I'm totally in favor of driving the space yeah, law discussion yeah. forward. Um, does any of your DAOs fall under any digital um, or virtual jurisdiction? What is a digital or virtual? So some 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 um, DAO providers claim that they are um, that, that they are in themselves a digital jurisdiction. Can you name it, Seamus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into well, well, but what is your? I guess I wonder what is your concept of what the meaning beyond it being a claim? Is there any validity to it, or does it just basically is it just a fancy way of describing a private contractual arrangement to buy by certain? I think the moment any of the awards is in any of those um, digital jurisdictions is enforceable through the New York Convention, then it would actually become something real. But then that would just mean that it's something like a nation state. You know, as far as I know, we haven't reached that right. position. But there are people in the space working very hard on trying to make this work. And I'm actually quite, quite excited about that. <laughs> yes, and actually there are some examples that we have of non-state law nonetheless being recognized by states in particular situations. And they, that Is that a specific good. example? Sharia law. Um, um, but Sharia law is state law, customary law, which is a different category as well. But so for and example, and yet, and yet on a, still, a jurisdiction basis. And and yet, yet, Still, it is. It is. In Singapore, we have Sharia courts. In Malaysia, there are Sharia courts. They have parallel court systems yeah. for certain actually, classes of Actually, what we Sharia law is not there's not just one Sharia law. There are Sharia laws that are very different and independent of jurisdiction. State. But there is, for example, and that plays in here, there are rules of laws, and there's, for example, the AOFI standards that are now used as like. Their contracts the state, the law of this, the, the, law, the, the contract is governed by the AOFI standards, and arbitration is supposed to be there without actually having, having a dedicating a nation state jurisdiction. And in that way, this still this comes down to enforcement. So, where are you able to enforce and which Sharia law court? It always comes down to Sharia court enforcement. No, but, but this, for example, the AOFI standards, so if you have most um, Islamic law, um, Islamic finance documents yes. are. Um, I'm familiar with that. Commerce is on so position for the, the. So if you look at Islamic finance, a lot of those contracts now say the AOFI standards because they're like you know it's, are coming out of Bahrain, and then this is actually enforced by the English English courts. So because the English courts have chosen to give that credence between two parties who've agreed to contract with. Where was the court of jurisdiction? Where you said which court? Well, but I think, I think she's saying that it's 
it, it's theoretically possible, it's possible that yeah, something could be done either on an international law basis or by But that was between two yeah. private individuals contracting into because you can say I want right. to try this in the courts of Bahrain according to the The point is that arbitration, if you choose arbitration, you can choose your rules of uh, of law, your it's substantive the law, and, procedure. and that just, and your point is that yeah, but this still needs enforcement, and those are the gatekeepers, right? Because but people can't agree with enforcement. People enforce private people, international law. People submit to that enforcement. Private international law is enforced by nations. But the states allow you to actually contract out so some of the, the legal system. States do between two private individuals subject to illegality and legal, other things. Legal, legal so entities. private international law is the conflict of laws, which is deciding which laws apply in which situation. So you um, can do forage, forage no, shopping. It's, it's, it's also shopping. contract and disputes in, 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 in between private individuals internationally. That's what you call private international law, conflict of laws. Um, so I, I don't think that's just conflict that laws. I, it's also conflict in trade disputes. It's, so it's conflict of laws. The Americans call it conflict of law. The British and the rest of the world call it private international law. Oh, oh. It's the same thing. Okay. So yes. the Americans talk about conflict of law, but each of that conflict of law rule are depending on the nation, on the nation's, the nation state, right? So Germany has different private international law rules than the U.S. Okay. So maybe we move on to the next we question. We should move on to the next yes, question. Yes. Can you doubt? Can you doubt rent office space in its name? Can I just say, I mean, all, all it seems to me that most of the rest of the questions, in fact, most of the questions in total, just come back to whether the DAO has a legal personality or not. Yes. Which is just a way of saying, does it have a legal wrapper? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, we see that, you know, there seem to be quite a lot of experts up here. It's more about, like, framing the, the issues and coming back to that one so, point. Can I ask, so really this was really originally really supposed to just be a, an introductory thing where it's like, here are the issues that we start thinking about, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we come to that. So, can we like just calm down a little bit and get to the actual, yeah. yeah. like, instead of arguing with each other before we're finished. This is what happens. Happen. This is why people like lawyers. I mean, <laughs> we, 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 we were one of the just questions, we're just setting the stage and then we go to the more basic um, intro. And the things we think we need to do to work on that uh, law. Um, so, I mean, if you think that these questions you have, we, we got there, we don't need to continue yeah. it, then we stop that now and we go to the personal, yeah. personal. I think we have to read through them really quickly. Yeah. 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 We don't, we don't, we don't have to debate. As a thought, as a thought experiment, you guys don't need to an answer. We can go through it. Yeah, so for example, can you download an office space? comes back to the legal website usually. Can you allow higher employees who are ta taxable in different jurisdictions? And they're actually I found quite interesting in DORC. It's pretty difficult to do this if your employees are in different jurisdictions. I, I mean, they're all, <coughs> yeah, I mean, they decided to do tenancy and contractors, so, but you still have to, like, fill a variety of different people who are in different tax classes. Can you dial high? Uh, sorry. Can you dial open a traditional bank account in your jurisdiction? Same thing comes back to that question. Can you dial pay taxes? Um, uh, does your dial need to pay social security contributions? Well, if you're employed, people probably yes, but maybe not able to. If you're not legal, should you, your personal legal liability be based on your role as a programmer, designer? Architect, legal counselor, content writer, uh, summon of your town. What do you think? Uh, in which roles should there be liability? As <coughs> well as we don't want liability, right? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you said you could be a liability. It would be great to have liability, yeah. Accountability. Um, yeah, just that yes. way you can show people that, you know, they can, they can trust you to not screw them. Yeah, I think that's that's a you know, there, there's, there's this big spectrum between having the heavy heavy hammer of the law imposing all this liability and then having this completely free space that is completely unregulated by. But, but, those are, but, those are, but if I decide when I have liability, that's yeah, a lot. That's a, a lot that's, a, that's a freedom for me, yeah. right? It's, it, it, it makes me freer if I can say when the legal system punishes me than if you know it gets to decide. Well, what about you have certain um, or, or just control? Well, that's, but that's, but that's where sort of the choice of legal wrapper comes in, right? The reason why most public companies are corporations 
because they scale very easily because they have clear default, non waivable fiduciary duties on the part of the boards of directors and management. Therefore, it's much easier for people to trust them. So it's kind of like a package deal. Then you could do LLCs. In many jurisdictions, you can wave away almost all you know, responsibilities with LLCs. It's kind of what's the use case? What are the investment? And, and, and like right now, developers like wave away all their liabilities. Well, they think they're doing that. They, they, they're, they're really not. They, they're, they're lawyers. Not. They're yeah. lawyers write liability waivers. Yeah. But it's but they're not enforceable yeah. in most jurisdictions. Yeah, exactly. They try. They try. That's all I'm saying. They try. In Europe, they're likely never enforceable. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you, yeah. they're not enforceable. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Y
sorry, I don't want to give answers to this. Um, sure. Yeah, I just I, I I have no problem skipping over the questions or whatever. Yeah. I don't have to face, but it's I just caution. I don't think it's true. Yeah, I think I disagree also. Yeah. 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 Would be the the person in the DAO, not the DAO itself. Sure, they would and be. They would like the yeah. yeah, the group. If you could sue the full group and they're joined and separately liable, I mean, to me, it seems kind of too cute by half to say you can keep the you can sue the persons but not the DAO. The DAO is a collection of persons. But what usually happens is like well, the person who is the lowest hanging. Yeah, the nearest available person, person who is most easily identifiable. And the one who has the most money. Imagine that no one's identifiable. You can still sue them, even though you can't identify them. That, that's yes. okay. There would just be no point. If you that's can't identify them, there's nothing. Not necessarily. That's you can not trigger. Yeah. They, might, they, might have, they might have assets somewhere identifiable. Exactly. Wait, it's crypto assets, but then it's difficult to identify. No, they can't have crypto assets somewhere. Eventually, they can no, I don't know. The, the, the point is that there is no right or wrong answer. There is a right or wrong answer. I, I don't think that. I don't think. I mean, I mean you can't. It, you won't know until you get sued, and then you we hope should, that. We should debate all that. Right. It's, it's not decidable. Is, there is, a, there is what, is what you're saying. There's, it, there's no decidable answer. But how do we know there is an answer? answer? It's just not decidable. It's, there is an answer, but it's why should position. you deal with the answer today? It's going to depend it's going to on the facts and circumstances. Yeah, exactly. It's an ex post examination of all of these things, and it's very unclear. It could go this way, it could go that way. I think the question is Will does your jurisprudence allow the creation of a legal entity that like wasn't created voluntarily, that doesn't isn't associated with any particular people, to be sued? And so when you sue, you know, for example, I can bring a law some of these places you can bring a lawsuit on behalf of a river that was blue. And, and, and maybe, you know, what do you mean? Three places you can do that. Sorry? What do you mean three places? India, you can do that. Okay. India. And India, because the thing is, the idea of legal personality in India is based on collective hallucination. Mm -hmm. So, how it Everywhere. Works. Everywhere. Well, I know it's, it's, it really states that. I mean, that people hallucinate the existence of something, the person, the first and the first cases of uh, a temple and the person right the temple doesn't exist anymore. You know? <laughs> but people have to live together and confirm that there is a temple. And there are huge political fights around that. So, for example, there are many cases where temples have returned to mosques, mosques have returned to temples, or church, and different groups of people claim personality of, nobody's doubting the personality, but what kind of personality is the problem? So, and then most cases, like for example, like the goddesses and gods in India, the actual statue. So, unlike Christianity, every incarnation of God is different. So it's not like when you keep God a personality, it is the personality. So every instance is a different personality, and then every part of the God is different. Every part of the river has a different person responsible for it. So most rivers and forests in India have a personality, but they consider minors. So there will be guardians who are taking care of them. So for example, if the gods, the tongue is taking care of a certain family, the ear is another family, the eye is another family, and it's hierarchy. So the tongues are usually considered the most people get to take care of the tongues, get to decide over the ears and eyes, because of arbitrary and problems. So so that's why even if you have a personality or something, it's much more complex than everyone's thing because then you have to decide that uh, because one personality can have some personalities like an Indian behavior. So, so, the, the, so yeah. maybe India is not a good idea for all of No, it's a great so, idea. So I think it's really good because like, it, it demonstrates the flexibility of legal personhood. But, I can, I can yeah. if, if there is no rapid free doubt, I can create one and then I can sue it. We're going to get into the presentation the difference between legal personality and legal capacity, which are often collapsed. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so we will we will, we will Later we can talk about it because it also depends exactly. on the theological assumptions. So, for example, in Hinduism and Buddhism, when you look at the soul or the absence of a certain Buddhism, the different Abrahamic traditions, that's why you can have personality and personalities, which you cannot have an Abrahamic conception of what a person is. Whereas when a person is in India, you can have capacity without agency, for example, in the Indian people. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. you don't need to have agency. Okay, so last two questions. Does your DAO comply with KYC AML laws? Does your DAO identify its own? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes
identify meaning legal identity, like legal first name, last name. Social security number. Social, social security number? Yeah. You exactly. social security number? Oh. Have to report it. oh, because they're employees? They're 1099 contractors. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you think that voting rights holders of your DAO should have mandatory voting rights holders meetings? Basically, like in, in traditional corporate governance, in order to recognize that you have this, this legal personality and, uh, and limited, limited liability to not pierce that veil, you have to have certain kinds of procedures that protect conflicts of interest between you know, the, the managers and, and the owners, vice versa, the minority shareholders. One of these things is usually a mandatory meeting where people can participate, have cons consent, be informed, that, that sort of thing. Do you feel that that is also necessary for its equivalent in the blockchain space, which we are roughly terming as what we That's consider. very interesting. I always thought that it's the other way around. It depends on how a DAO actually functions. There should be a legal entity formed around them. So if the DAO, for example, functions like the General Assembly, then it's reasonable to form the rules around that that actually um, describe how the General Assembly functions and how these procedural rules are affecting the DAO. And then here's of the, the meeting on the first thing that we can happen and the decision actually has some weight. And if it functions in form of having a lot of members, but then there's just a board member that actually um, creates the decision, then it might actually be that dictatorship. Or if there's a whole board that takes the decision and it functions like an LLC, but it's always about how the members are deciding that they're going to be governing themselves, mm -hmm. that we should apply the rules, and we should apply the legal entity, and we should form the procedures. In this case, if we say people who are participating in the governance, should those members, whether it's a, a, the board or an entire general assembly, should it be required of DAOs to require to have these kinds of regular? Oh yeah, it depends how it affects the members. If it affects me as a member, and it's a decision that somebody else took, then I would like them to be responsible for those decisions. If so, it affects me severely, if it does not affect me, but it's just a statement, then it's just a movement. It's not even necessary to have either. So as a as a matter of due process, if you are if you as a member are materially affected, you feel that you Yeah, absolutely. Which then also means you need to distinguish governance between right, people who have voting rights tokens versus but that might also include if we widen that circle, people who also have ownership rights. Yeah, yeah, right. So then that becomes a difficult to distinguish as well. Yeah. Okay, so so we're 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 uh, done with the question of our thanks. We're gonna continue this feedback. Hopefully, you know, get more when it's not 9 a.m. on the last day of the conference in Typhoon. Um, so um, so this is uh, just an introduction to us. Um, you know, a lot of us are you know participants working in different areas of the space. Um, we came together a few years ago to form a, a research and development community around how to create new legal frameworks, how to create new kinds of culture, that sort of thing. Um, and um, so one of the projects that we've been working on, we've had a variety of working groups over the year, is creating precisely because of this gap between the, lay, the way the legacy legal system works and the way this infrastructure enables new kinds of participation which might require a replumbing of all of that. We've come up with this project, which is the Dow Model Law Project. And um, well, we, we can go, go into, you know, the plan right now is to kind of go through what we see as the main issues and then if we have some time, maybe take a few minutes to break out into each component of the model law and have you guys brainstorm on what we can come up with as a technological guarantee or in the legal, in, in the legal term of art, a functional equivalent to a traditional requirement such that we can map out a continuum of things that people can do to enjoy a spectrum of legal benefits and protections. That's the, the main idea. So, you know, as, as you guys can see from the questionnaire, um, you know, we've looked at why it's important to, to, to um, oh yeah, why do we need to change the law? Because right now, DAOs, you know, putting aside this unincorporated associations, general partnerships, which are then looked at after the fact when things go wrong, right now, taking away the exceptions. Right now, DAOs cannot 
and largely cannot own assets you know, in, in its own name, enter into contra contracts in its own name, sue or be have standing to sue or be sued. And minus, and absent all of that, uh, the, the person who they're going to find, you know, when things go wrong, is the nearest available human. So right now, when DAOs, uh, without um, a legal wrapper, or, or, you know, um, they, the DAOs do not actually exist in the eyes of the law until after the fact, in fact, are, 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 are you know, minus all the exceptions. It's largely, the law sees what the DAO is doing through the, what the participants are doing. Um, what we see is that a lot of people in this space that don't actually know what their liability is and immediately the risks are when participating in a DAO, um, when joining as a reputation or uh, voting rights holders in a DAO. No one thinks about it and no one thinks um, about down the line what can happen out of that. So, you know, why is it important to solve, solve these problems? Well, right now we have this unlimited liability, never mind wanting limited liability. We, we, we have an unknown and unlimited liability today for all participants. In various jurisdictions. In various jurisdictions. Um, right, great, we'll talk about that specifically. Uh, and, and, you know, frankly, DAOs have a difficult oper time operating in the legacy world. I'm sure many of you guys have been involved in projects that, where it's been very difficult to, to, um, to get a, just to get a bank account, right? It's, it's an extremely difficult proposition. Um, you know, when, uh, when, when you hire employees, with what, which, what, with what entity do you hire that employee, right? Um, and, it, you know, in the case where you create some sort of, you know, uh, legal, legal wrapper um, and, and that particular, um, in, you know, third party, whether it's a person or, or a company, contracts with that legal wrapper, there's still, you know, the legal reality that exists, and then there's the blockchain reality. So whatever the DAO, the DAO is supposed to be operated by this code, but you have all of these other non-off-chain um, uh, rules and procedures and powers, and power dynamics that are actually affecting the DAO operates. And some jurisdictions have started to implement laws, so for example Malta, um, to give some kind of recognition to um, DAO, so it's part of the um, framework. Um, what we have, uh, however, noted is that what they're trying to do, I mean, more, and this is now my personal opinion, um, Malta has very much turned it down into usual corporations by requiring like seven different in parties to be intermediaries for that uh, particular DAO. It's very expensive um, for anyone to register their DAOs in the jurisdiction. Um, this is, in a way, it's part of a I would still call it a top-down imposition of a, of, a of a new framework. And what would be, or an outreach would be important, is creating something that is coming from the ecosystem where we actually can um, get a, produce a better framework that is more suited to the DAO realities. Yeah, just sort of a, maybe a foundational question. I, mean, I sort of under, I, you know, I, I agree with much of this, but. The, given that there are, you know, obviously there are, if the, if the main issue, it seems like the main issue you're floating is people are getting together, they're using smart contracts, they're calling it a DAO, and it's not clear if that has legal personality, it wouldn't be convenient if uh, they did have legal personality. But there are lots of current solutions for giving something legal personality, right, that are all, already exist under current law, limited liability partnerships, limited, you know, uh, limited liability companies, corporation, you know, you name it. Um, so why, you know, it, it seems like, a, and I'm sure you have a reason for it, but I'm wondering what the reasons are. It seems like a dramatic step to say, we need a brand new way to create limited liability, uh, sorry, to create legal personality. Why are the existing solutions just totally inadequate? What, what, is, what specifically is so bad about them that we need to create a new way of having legal personality? And in the meantime, until it comes out, everybody's in the legal limbo. So why don't you just use existing structures to cover it off, and then if, instead of waiting five or ten years for this to happen? Well, I don't know. That well, you know, we can do both of these things at the same time. You know, I mean, um, it, it, this is not end or or. I mean, there are at the moment current structures, and the best structures right now are in the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, there are various people who are not in the United States or who do not want to be associated to uh, the jurisdictions in the United States. It's all
also a very bad idea, for example, to register. If your DAO holds like a decentralized exchange or wallet or whatever to register.